Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our first hot topic talks about fuel crisis now. Global suppliers of petrol are no longer enthusiastic about supplying the product on credit to the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, due to piling debts. Sources said the NNPCL, which solely imports the product using supply agents, is apparently weighed down by over $6 billion um, in debts, which the firm has not settled over time. The setback, according to informed sources, is apparently responsible for the lingering hiccups in the fuel supply in recent weeks. And joining us to discuss this is Comrade Mark Adebayo. Um, good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning, man. Good morning, viewers. Thank yeah. you for having me. Thank you. So we're talking about, um, you know, fuel distribution, and we've seen long queues um, here in Nigeria. I mean, I would take my own locality, for example. In Lagos, most of the, the fuel stations have long queues. Most of them are even selling for as high as 860 naira, 900 naira, thereabouts. And I can only imagine what other states who have, you know, higher prices would be selling. And there are people who cannot still afford this product. In fact, someone was come, supposed to come see me yesterday and she said, I have no fuel at the moment. So I want to get your take on where we are now as a nation. Seeing the fact that the NNPCL, in fact, has admitted to having some financial crisis and we're seeing that we're owing about $6 billion. And that's the reason why we cannot even get this product. I want to get your take on it first before we dive in. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, well, it's one of the chaos of leadership in this country that we are in this uh, type of situation. Mm. Here in Abuja, uh, you, we buy fuel as high yeah, at the filling station. So not uh, black market, 900 naira at the filling station. That's wow. where I bought my, uh, I've, I've been buying. Because when you get there, there, is, there are no queues because it, it's too high for many, for many Nigerians. And, but if you have somewhere to go, you have to go there, you know, painfully, painfully pay 900 uh, naira per liter. Yeah. And in some areas, they, they pay as high as 1,200 per liter. Um, on, the, on the black market, you buy as high as 1,500 per liter. That is wow. the situation where we have found ourselves. Yeah, in the country with the uh, with, that is the largest oil producer uh, in Africa. This is where we have found ourselves. You see, one of the reasons, I, I mean, uh, there is no explanation, there is no reasoning behind the fact that uh, the NNPCL is owing, and you know, the NNPCL is the sole is the sole importer of fuel into this country, and it's yeah. owing 9.6 trillion naira. 9.6 because uh, approximately 9.6 trillion naira. Hmm. Suppliers. Nobody has been able to, to tell us why are they so heavily indebted. Nobody has been able to tell us uh, when they sell the product, don't they pay back to the mm. to the suppliers? I mean, where does the money go? But because you see, there's a lot of opaqueness, there's a lot of falsehoods, there's a lot of deliberate misinformation about the oil administration regime in this country from inception. There has not been a lot of opaqueness. That nobody is telling us how much we are making from oil. Nobody is telling us how much. Uh, violence of day we are pumping. Nobody is telling us how much is being stolen. Nobody is telling us. You see, a lot of opaqueness and deliberate misinformation from our government. From our government. So, somebody must be able to explain to us why NNPCL is owing 9.6 billion, the trillion naira, you know, to suppliers of fuel. What, what, what happened to the, what was happening? How come? Where, how did the indebtedness come in? Now, the spokesperson for NNPCL, rather than give us concrete facts and evidence about why they are owing so much, and why they have to owe in the first instance at all? He said, no, 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 that's the normal thing all over the world. You, you run or you buy fuel on credit and rest of it. Now, the question is, how did it get so worse that you have become so uh, credit unworthy? You have become credit unworthy that the suppliers are saying, look, we can, we can no longer supply Nigeria with, with, with finished product. So it, it means, you see, one, one thing that baffles me is that the ruling clique in this country, the people who are rulers of this country, the people who are handlers of this country, the people who claim to be leaders of this country, they, they don't know how to do anything. That is just the conclusion. They don't know how to do anything. Security, they are a failure. Fuel supply, they are a failure. Electricity, they are a failure. Uh, employment, they are a failure. Economy, they, they, can't, they can't handle. So in, why are they in government? The question that agitates the minds of many Nigerians is that if you cannot fix the economy, you cannot fix the security, you cannot fix the power, you cannot fix the energy, you cannot fix welfare. Now, what, uh, what can you do? What are you doing in government? 
That is the question that agitates the minds of many Nigerians. So, you see, long queues, they, they, they told us, oh, don't worry, when we deregulate, we remove the subsidy, uh, fuel will be available for everybody to buy, uh, there will be a price regime that will not be, that will be different from the other, you can go and buy from the cheapest and the rest of that, all those are lies. As we have no with the benefit of our side now, we can now see that government lied to us. We can now see that government misled us. We can now see that government misinformed us. So they have run into crisis. The other day, we are told that uh, the federal government had to bail, uh, you know, bail out NMPCL with maybe was it 30 uh, billion or so or something. You know, they, they, they were bail, there was a bailout recently from the federal government. Now, uh, everything that has to do with oil, fuel, uh, administration regime in this country, like I said, is all is all covered in falsehoods and deliberate misinformation on the part of the government. How did we get there? They, they brought us here. To get out of this place, they can't get out of the place. So because, you see, the suffering increases because fuel, fuel, oil is the, uh, fuel is the engine oil of our economy, the kind of economy yeah. that we have in this country. Because anything that's that, that uh, affects movement, transportation, mm -hmm. we affect every. It, it affects the prices of products down the chain line. So that is what we are having now. Your friend said you could not come because you could not get fuel. Because if you here in Abuja, some people spend as as uh, as much as five six hours on the queue. If you want to buy at the rate of seven hundred naira, if you want to buy at the rate of seven hundred naira, you have to be you have to endure to be on a long queue behind 200, 300 vehicles. I, I, I look at the kind of man hour, the productive man hour people yeah. waste just me for fuel in, uh, in in the in the in the in the Africa's largest oil producing country. This is what we have found ourselves. Our leaders have failed. They are making the country to fail. They are not able to do anything, anything. All they give is excuses. All they give, they, they have nothing to offer than excuses. Like I said, security they cannot fix. They cannot the economy they cannot manage. Uh, education they are failing. Health. No, they are nowhere to be found. Everything about this country, because they have failed, they are now turning Nigeria into a rapidly failing state. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. I mean, it's quite, it's quite sad and unfortunate because, like you've, you've said, where does this money go to? Now, we know that NNPCL, in fact, it has been said over time, and I think the World Bank as well has accused them, saying that NNPCL is not transparent. So how do we know, you know what you're doing? How do we know how much we make? How do we know what we're producing? We have no clue what's going on. And a, a big thought question is, where does the money go to? Like you have asked, where does the money go to? So is this a case of you know, corruption that we've allowed to just really eat so deeply into our system that a whole six billion, nine point six um, trillion naira is being spent and no one is saying anything. At this point, how can we make the NNPCL, NNPCL accountable for this? Because six billion dollars is a whole lot of money. And the, 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 the threat to this now is the, um, the fuel queues, the scarcity is even going to worsen. So if we're seeing queues for as long as you can imagine, then that means some people will just never get this product in time to come. So how can we make the NNPCL more accountable? Yeah, you, you, you mentioned corruption. In fact, what is happening in Nigeria is more than humongous corruption. It is satanic corruption. It has become satanic corruption. You know, the, the, um, like I said uh, uh, at the beginning, you know, there's a lot of opaqueness you know, surrounding the uh, oil industry in this country. So nobody, both upstream, downstream, middle stream, any, any stream, they, they, there is a lot of opaqueness. There are deliberate misinformation. Nobody knows how much is going in and coming out. So that is the problem that we have. Since, since uh, independence, we didn't just start to the job that is worsening. It's exacerbating by the day. Because the worst of us is taking over uh, the government, you know, successively. So there's a lot of uh, collaborative criminality going on when, when, with regard to the oil industry in Nigeria. There's collaborative criminality that makes it impossible for our refineries to work. There's collaborative criminality that makes millions of barrels of oil per day to be stolen, uh, unhindered, unhindered by criminals in the high seas. There is a lot of collaborative criminality between government and agencies that are supposed to, ma to manage our economy, to manage our oil industry. There's a lot of uh, 
you know, that there's a lot of women. This country is a victim of collaborative criminality among our leaders. That is what, 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 what we are seeing now. And then when this thing lingers, you will see the end result will be that they will now tell us eh, officially you now have to begin to buy fuel at 1,200, 1, 1,000. That is where they are going. That is why, where they are going. And then I only hope that these people know that they are pushing Nigerians, they are pushing Nigeria against the wall, and they are not trying to push Nigeria in, into the wall. The people will react. The people, and when the people react, there is no power on earth that can stop the people from doing what they will do. I'm only afraid for mob action, an organized revolution that can collapse the country. And that, that is, and these people are not seeing it. Because they are cocooned inside powerhouses, believing that it will go on forever. It doesn't go on forever. It doesn't go on forever. The, the, a day is coming that the people of this country will rise up in unison to fight for justice, to fight for the economy, to fight for generations unborn. Because these guys are mortgaging generations unborn, and we cannot sit idle. We cannot sit idle and not do something about it. We need to save the present for the present to be able to save the future. Like I said, the, 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 you test satanic leadership to have the kind of satanic corruption, the mongrel corruption that we have in this country. They have no agenda, they have no plans, they have no vision on how this country can move forward. All they are after is to loot the economy, is to loot the treasury, is to loot the country and its resources and disrupt the, the, the progression of Nigeria towards an advanced society. That is what we have been having since flag independence. And you will know that if you analyze the current core of leadership, you will see that they, they are either empty. Somebody called the former president brain dead. These ones are even empty brain. And the only brain, the only brain, the only intelligence to have is the intelligence to, to loot, to steal, and to misgovern the country. It's quite unfortunate. The other day, just two days ago, uh, imagine bandits, uh, they call them bandits, like terrorists, you know, seized. Uh, Nigeria said, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a personal carrier. <laughs> and were, uh, uh, look at the final video. Uh, it's such a shame. It's such a shame. So embarrassed. But the people who are ruling us are shameless. They don't, they don't, they don't see it as anything. Yeah? You know? So but I, I was thinking uh, by now we should have run these people out of, out of the country. All these terrorists and bandits and kidnappers are, that, are, that are ravaging the country all, 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 over, all, over, all over the place. Mm. Uh, I don't know. But the country is, the, the, the security agencies are effective in, in targeting people. Uh, you know, social media influencers who criticize the government, bloggers who criticize the government, journalists who do their job of being the, the ears and the eyes of, of the people, the journalists, the media, the fourth estate of the realm that is supposed to, to regulate the activities of the three other arms of government is now even under, is not even under threat. That the, the freedom of speech is under threat. The freedom, freedom of the press is is under threat, under a supposedly democratic, you know, a regime. That 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 is what we are having. But you know something, we cannot we cannot be gagged. We refuse to be gagged. We refuse to keep quiet. We will speak. We will speak and we will speak loud against injustice, against corruption, about against bad leadership. We will speak. We will talk. Let the heaven fall. We will continue to speak and to act against bad governance. What we are saying is that look, give us a let let, let us breathe. I mean, let Nigerians breathe. Let our economy breathe. Let this country breathe. Let, let the people breathe. Please, let, you are suffocating us. You are gagging us. You are shocking us. And the people, and the people are tired. Things will happen. You know? So, um, is either they, they are completely run out of ideas or that they are deliberately punishing the people? Because, mm. like, uh, like I did say in one of my interviews, the fact remains that we cannot claim that a government is uh, is patriotic or responsible, that in this type of economy, that somebody who says he feels our pains, he understands what we are passing through, uh, yeah, he wished that there was another way that he could that he, he would have left the subsidy. No, that, that same president now took 150 billion to go and purchase a presidential jet, and one billion to purchase a Cadillac, a, a Cadillac to, to join the presidential fleet of cars. To, to what extent? To what level? You are asking the people to tighten their their belt. Your, your, your belly is, 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 is you have you are developing pot belly by the day. You, your children, your family, your cronies, and the rest of that. Yeah, as it is with the president, it's with the governors and the ministers. It just it just seems that we are we are living in two different worlds. These guys really don't care about us.
is quite unfortunate. That is why, and you, will, you begin to wonder, why have they left the leadership of NNPCL to be there in the last eight or nine years, mm. untouched? They are there, mismanaging the, the fuel, mismanaging the oil, and nobody is, is querying uh, anybody. The government agencies that are supposed to be up and doing, are to do, there are piles of petitions against the leadership of NPCL to yeah. the EFCC, to the ICPC, nobody is doing anything about it. Because immediately you are you are fighting corruption politically. So if you are politicized, corruption, anti-corruption fight, you know, that's what happens. You only go after some targets, your victims, the, the people that you know have fallen out of uh, out of favor. You understand? That, that, those, are the, those are the people you begin to pursue. Those are the people you begin to run after. But you see people sitting over human gold corruption in or outside government, you won't touch them because there is no political will to, to, to fight corruption holistically. Just pick and choose. This one, is, 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 I don't like his face. This one <laughs> didn't support me during the primary. This right. one uh, <laughs> is this and that. Then you go after all those ones. Well, you pick and choose, by the time you introduce selective engagement in anti-corruption fight, you have compromised the anti-corruption struggle. There is nothing you can do. The anti-corruption agencies like EFCC and SBCUs should be totally independent. Independent. In fact, you know, once they owe the, the tenure of the office uh, to the pleasure of the president, they will do everything to satisfy them. They won't touch the president's friends. Mm. They won't touch his political crony. That is where... Yeah, okay, come with Mark, quickly. I want to... put the under the power and authority of the Attorney General of the Federation, yeah, it is all over. All the, right, so I wanted, to, I, wa I wanted to quickly ask, I wanted to quickly ask about the NNPCL um, because, you know, you had mentioned, and even my other guests had also mentioned this, that most times when they want to increase the price, this is what they do. They create an artificial scarcity um, so that whenever it's available, you would easily buy it for whatever rate or whatever price they tell you to buy it. Why is that their strategy? And, you know, if they keep saying that, you know, um, we're, not, we're not paying subsidy, even though we know that it's a quasi-subsidy, how did we get to six billion naira, um, six billion dollars rather? How did we owe this yeah. much? And is this just a ploy to ensure that they increase the pump price again? Because you know, talking about the quasi subsidy, if we're going to look at the exchange rates um, of today and what we're actually buying as fuel, it should actually fluctuate. The, the the price shouldn't be stable. But is this just maybe a ploy to now make sure that they are not paying anything? as a quasi-subsidy and um, ensure that everybody is paying at whatever pump price they decide? Well, I, I think deploy, I think deploy they are, they are applying now because they are owing the, uh, this much and they are looking for ways to pay back. They will see police people to, to make us pay back what they are owing, what they have stolen. Mm. They, they, they want to make the people pay back. Even now, you see, don't expect government to come out and announce officially that uh, they have increased the pump price of fuel. They will just, you, because they already see they can see that Nigerians are buyers, that, that, we are, that we are desperate, we want to move around, yeah. we want to work. You know, we are among the hardest working people all over the world. That is why when Nigerians go outside there, whether in education, whether in administration, whether in anything, in any human endeavor, for sport or anything, we, we, our students excel everywhere, our bankers excel everywhere, our accountants, our engineers, our computer scientists excel all over the world. We are hard working people. We, right. are, we are just being unfortunate to have, the, to have the kind of leaders who are rulers, who are dealers. To, 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 to be handling the country. So the, the, the plot is that this 9.6 trillion naira, they are looking for a way that to make Nigerians pay back. That's what they, they, are, they, are, they are doing this. So that people, be, the, the, the dealers, the fuel dealers are now selling at an uh, unofficial rate of 800 naira, 900 naira, 1,000 naira per litre. Already they have uh, unofficially increased the pump price of fuel because I don't, uh, don't see the pump, price of, pump prices of fuel going down anytime soon. Then time soon. And once you know, once the price goes up like that, it doesn't come down. You know, it, it, it doesn't come down just like that. Because these people, they don't even have a clue as to what they can do to even manage the economy in a way that now they are threatening. Uh, they are threatening traders. If you don't bring down price of oil, we give you three months. Bring it down. If you don't do this, you can't force people to do that because your economy, your policies, your, uh, your policies uh, is aggravating the inflation. The Naira is really is followed by the day. The uh, all other currencies, including the currency of Republic of Benin, Republic of Benin is about or less than the size of Ogun State. They are they are they are, they are 
their sefa is worthy, is worthier than our naira. What a shame. When I was growing up, when I was growing up, with one naira, you enter the Republic of Benin, with one naira, you will eat belleful, you will collect change, you will do. Today, our, our naira has totally crashed to the yeah, currency of uh, of Benin Republic here. Now, we used to rush there to go and buy cars, to come buy cars and the rest of that. Now, they are coming here now to buy cars because their currency is stronger. We have we have people in power who are not thinking about that, who are not ashamed of that, that a Benin Republic that is about the size or less than the size of Ugu State in Nigeria, the currency, their neighbors, our immediate neighbors, their, their currency is uh, is stronger than Naira. It is quite unfortunate. Where Naira used to be stronger than the, than, than, dollar, than the dollar and the pound. But now, what do we get? The worst, the beautiful ones are not yet born. It is only the ugly ones who have been who have been taking the reins of power. That is the that is our dilemma as a country. That is our problem as a country. That is our it's not it is not our destiny, and it is not our destination. It is that by error of omission or commission, the worst among us get to govern us. That is where we are. The only way now is for Nigeria to have a revolutionary thinking leadership, a visionary, a patriot we, to, to, to take over power and fix this country. These people cannot fix this country. Obviously, they cannot. They just will give me an excuse and the rest of that uh, until there are four years we go. But we have a responsibility as a people to use the ballot to bring the kind of leadership that we want. We must be well organized this time around. We must be solidly organized this time around. Because you see, you cannot expect a doubt. Uh -huh. See, this is what you are saying. You, you can see they have, since they have taken the, the power just like that. So sorry you know. about that, but please can, go ahead. Can you we see? We can me? hear you. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, so because I have to put in, a, you know, a self help here to put a lamp ready. I knew they would, they, they would strike at any time. I know. So that, that is, this is the kind of. But that's why I said that. What can they do? What can they fix? They cannot fix anything. They can't fix the economy, they can't fix our school, they can't fix our education, they can't fix our health, they can't fix our roads, you know? Hmm. As said, so what can we do now? Where, 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 where do we go from here? We know that um, Dangote Refinery is, you know, set to roll out products. Um, I don't know about Portacourt Refinery. It was supposed to start operations in August, but it has been moved. Kaduna Refinery is supposed to start operations in December. We don't know what, you know, that's, that's going to happen. Um, we don't know if that's going to happen in that same December that they've already proposed. So where do we go from here? We're a nation, you know, one of the largest producing, um, oil producing nation in Africa, but yet we're still looking for this product, looking, um, you know, just to get it. We cannot get it, and it's expensive. Where do we go from here? What can we do to ensure that because, like we all know, fuel is a major thing for our economy. That's one. And then for people, it is a means of transportation, is an alternative source of power. So we need this product. How do we ensure um, that we can even refine for ourselves? What should the NMPCL be doing now? Because since they're the sole um, producer or sole distributor of this. Uh, well, you see, the, I'm not optimistic that... Um uh, forget about Kaduna Refinery that uh, we start any work anytime soon. Forget about that. If you say December, maybe they are talking December 2027. But uh, this December, I'm not optimistic about that. And then about Dangote Refinery, you have been hearing that since July. Dangote will start rolling out. But then, uh, you saw that uh, local and international cabals came after, after Dangote uh, yeah. Refinery. Came after him in a way that, uh, in a very clear language, that look, we are not going to allow you to, to, to operate. We are not going to allow you to, to, to breathe. We are not going to allow you to start you know, refining in a way that does not bring down the prices, uh, the pump prices of oil. That is where, that is their contention. That is their contention. That, you see, because these people, the local international cabal, are not after the interests of Nigerians. All they are after is about their pocket. They are like, uh, how do you call them? They, 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 there's this uh, you know, cult, there's this cult mentality among the people that uh, uh, in this uh, oil uh, industry, that uh, which uh, Dagote uh, is an outlier, It's an outlier about it. It's not. It's not really an inner caucus of the uh, of the Kaba. That's why they came after him, and they are hurting Nigerians, and they are hurting the economy of Nigeria. They, uh, you said, what can the NPC do? 
Uh, the NPC perhaps doesn't know what to knows what to do, but they are not going to do it because um, doing the right thing means lesser funds to steal by the cabal. Means uh, you know because they believe that the comfort of Nigerians is uh, uh, they, they are disagreeable to the comfort of Nigerians. Mm. That is the problem we have. That is the tragedy of this country because I uh, doubt if the NPCL can change its ways. Because let them start first by telling you the truth. What is happening? Yeah. Why are we having school? Now, it, it, it was exposed that, it was an expose that they are owing 9.6 trillion naira. And then the international chain supply said, look, look you, you are owing too much. You are not credit worthy. So we are not going to bring, we are, to, we are not selling anything to, to you on credit anymore. So, can they pay what they, they are owing now? Can they pay back in one first suit? At least pay half of it so that uh, they can become credit worthy again. And the way things are going, if they stop supplying the fuel, you can, you can imagine it's unimaginable, unimaginable kind of crisis we are going to have in this economy. Well, hopefully, already, hopefully it, it, it um, that crisis is being averted. And I know one thing that you just mentioned, which is key, is the NNPCL needs to start by being transparent. I think if we're if we have that level of transparency, we can start to work our way back. There are so many things that are going wrong, like you rightly pointed out. But it is important that we start to work our way back, start to put in the work in Nigeria to ensure that we have a better Nigeria, not just for ourselves, but, you know, for, for the people who are also going to come and inherit this land. This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment right now. Comrade Mark, thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure discussing this with you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for TV Africa. Thank you, women. You too, sir. Have, you have so a much. nice day. All right, so we're speaking with Comrade Mark Adebayo, and we've just been talking about, um, you know, the scarcity, in fact, to worsen. Comrade Mark Adebayo is the national spokesperson for CUPP. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be analyzing the political issues in reverse PDP. Please stay with us.